Hey guys, back with another video. Uh, switched around the audio again. Uh, it's going to be a continuing issue, it seems like, that I uh, mess up, but the only thing that's going to mess up today is my voice for some reason. It's uh, deciding to mess up. Anyway, on the train with lower powered commander decks or just funny ideas, stuff like that, that I play, a um, long time ago I built a deck around a guy called Slimefoot based around sapperling, sacrificing them, and doing things. Um, I thought the deck was pretty fun, but overall it just didn't really click with me as a deck I wanted to keep long term. <clears throat> so I decided to switch it over to a secondary commander I had in there, Grismold the Dread Sower. Drizmold is a one colorless, one black, one green troll shaman. He's a 3-3 three, three with trample. At the beginning of your end step, each player creates a 1-1 one, one green plant creature token. Whenever a creature token dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Grismold the Dread Sower. <coughs> so the thing I really liked about him is, one, he's only three mana, so you could get him out pretty fast. Two, he has trample built on him. So for Voltron type styles, he's going to be easier to get in through with damage. Three, He's giving everybody tokens, so they're going to naturally already maybe be doing token type stuff and have them naturally dying on their battlefield anyway, which is going to make Grismal bigger. But if I give them the tokens, it's going to be a lot easier to make sure they die. <clears throat> so kind of running with this, we have a little bit of Voltron and Aristocrat style. I'll start off with the creatures. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat. Like I told you, I'm, I'm not sure if the coffee did. <laughs> uh, Zulaport Cutthroat. One color is one black. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. You gain one life. We also do a lot of things with the Voltron. So, Corpse Shack Menace. Two colorless, one black, one green. It's a 4-4. Four, four. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters would be put on a creature you control, twice that many 1-1 one, one counters are put on it instead. So, you'll see we have some styles to be able to kill tokens and uh, make them automatically just enter and die. So that can easily equate to a lot of plus one counters on our commander. <clears throat> we have a species specialist. Two colorless, two black. Uh, when it enters, you choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. So it's really nice. Enters, say plant. Plants enter, automatically die, get free draws out of it. Again, if you guys see cards that you're kind of like, uh, I'm not sure why that card's really in there. Maybe it kind of seems like it sucks. Uh, let me know down in the comments, this deck is built completely out of cards that I already owned, except for maybe one or two that I traded, or when I was tearing other decks apart, I was kind of like, I don't know where to put this card, I just kind of slid it in here. Uh, Death Tyrant. Four colorless, one black, Beholder Skeleton. It is a 4-6 with Menace. <clears throat> Whenever an attacking creature you control, or a blocking creature an opponent controls dies, Create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. You could pay 6 to return them from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. <clears throat> so really, the top part, uh, whenever an attacking creature you control dies, is alright. But really, the big piece of this is whenever a blocking creature an opponent controls dies. So if we don't have ways to automatically make these plants die when they enter, the Beholder is still going to make it so we get zombies, even if they use the plants as blockers against other people during other combats. So very, very nice card for this deck. Uh, Bloodseeker, a card I don't think enough people use. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. So this is very good against token styles. If you see people playing... Um, uh, Cranko, other styles like this. This card can actually do a lot of work because if they decide to create 26 goblins at their end step before their turn starts, you can choose to make that person lose 26 life. Blood Artist. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain one life. Sangromancer. Two colorless, two black, three three flying vampire shaman. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may gain three life. Whenever an opponent discards a card, you may gain three life. So it's very good because whenever a creature dies, you gain three. But I also play with a lot of discard things in my pod. So whenever an opponent discard cards can be pretty gross and help me out a lot. Uh, Farika, God of Affliction. One colorless, one black, one green. It is an indestructible 5-5 five five legendary enchantment creature god. As long as your devotion to black or green is less than seven, it's not a creature. 
Uh, you could pay one black and one green to exile a creature card from a graveyard, and its owner puts a plus one, plus one black and green snake enchantment creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. So we do have a couple enchantment things, but not much. The big thing is, is that we can remove creatures from graveyards to create a 1-1, one, one, which is going to make Grismal bigger as long as that 1-1 one, one dies. So, pretty good card. Uh, Noctal War Pride. Three colorless, three green, cat warrior creature. It's from uh, Future Sight, I believe this that's called. That's why the art is uh, kind of weird. Uh, it must be blocked by exactly one creature, if able, and whenever it attacks, you put X tokens into play attacking that are copies of it, where X is the number of creatures defending player controls. Remove the tokens from the game at end of turn. So, just a really nice way, if people have a lot of tokens, we get to create a bunch of these and swing in a, a person. Poison Tip Archer, two colorless, one black, one green. Elf Archer, reach, death touch, T3, which is very helpful in a lot of situations but whenever another creature dies each opponent loses one life so this is one of the best cards in the deck just because it's whenever another creature dies so create the four plants they die when they enter you get each opponent losing four life uh sir conrad the grim three colorless two black legendary creature human knight five four whenever another creature dies or a creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. You can pay one in a black, each player mills a card. The bottom part's not too helpful in this deck unless you're playing against someone who tutors and puts something on top. Really, he deals damage when creatures die. <clears throat> Massacre Worm, three colorless, three black. When it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponents control get negative two, negative two until the end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. Another really good card once you get everything kind of popping off that Grismold will be able to really produce off of it. Plus, you'll be making people lose life very fast. <clears throat> Clackbridge Troll. It's three colorless, two black. Trample Haste Troll, 8-8. Eight, eight. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero one one white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, you tap the troll, you gain 3 life, and draw a card. So, gives them tokens, it sac makes them sacrifice creatures. If we have ways to kill those tokens anyway, then they're going to have to sacrifice a creature they probably don't want to. And if they do sacrifice the creature, which most likely our deck benefits off of, we get to gain 3 life and draw a card. <clears throat> Another really good card for this deck. This is one of the main things that you need in this kind of deck to really be able to make Grismold uh, a strong value engine. Caravec the Spiteful. <clears throat> two colorless, two black, legendary creature, human warlock. Other creatures get negative one, negative one. So this is basically how you make this engine start to pop off, is you have this out, go to your end step, create the plants. The plants die as soon as they enter, they get the plus one counters because of it. Plus, I got the foil extended art. I remember when I pulled this, uh, I was pretty pissed because I thought about building this as a deck and I was kind of like, eh, this is a really bad deck idea. So I ended up building this and just sliding it in. But that's kind of how the most fun decks come, just out of nowhere. Uh, Nadir's Nightblade, two colorless, one black. Uh, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. Avenger of Zendikar. Five colorless, two green. When it enters, you create uh, a zero one green plant creature token for each land you control. And the landfall puts four plus one counters on each, or puts one plus one plus one counter on each plant you control. Um, <clears throat> I was mixing up with Phylath for a second. Um, you're really not going to do the landfall. You, you just want to slap down seven plants and have them instantly die. Solm Simulacrum, four colorless, golem. When it enters, search for a land, put it on the battlefield, tapped, shuffle. When it dies, you may draw a card. Eternal Witness, one colorless, two green. Uh, human Shaman, when it enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. <clears throat> so that's it for the creatures. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Create tokens, things that are aristocrat strategy that make sense, and things that give negative counters, create creatures... The typical stuff you would expect from this style of deck. Move on to the enchantments. Um, start off with Bastion of Remembrance. 
It is two colorless, one black. When it enters, you create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. <clears throat> Doomwake Giant. We do have some enchantments in here, so this is something that could be recurrable. Uh, actually, we have a decent amount of enchantments, and that uh, Farika can create them. Uh, it is a giant with consolation. So whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creatures your opponent's control get negative one, negative one until the end of turn. Very nice way to repeatedly uh, wipe the board of their creature tokens that we're giving them. Death's Presence. Five colorless, one green. Whenever a creature you control dies, put X one one counters on target creature you control, where X is the power of the creature that died. This is a nice way if someone just gets rid of Grismold, we can move the counters over to something else. Not to mention this is just going to always buff Grismold because we're always wanting creatures to die. <clears throat> Wild Growth. One green, channel land. It taps for an additional green. <clears throat> Knight of Souls Betrayal. Two colorless, two black. Legendary enchantment. All creatures get negative one, negative one. <clears throat> Virulent Plague. Two colorless, one black. Creature tokens get negative two, negative two. Infernal Genesis. Four colorless, two black. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. He or she then puts X11 one, one black minion creature tokens into play where X is the card's converted mana cost. This is a really good card for this deck in general, but the thing I really like about it is if Grismold does get wiped a few times and we need to get back into the game, if you're able to play Grismold and you have any type of negative one on the board, this is going to make it so when you come back to your turn, you could possibly have lethal damage on someone. Um, <clears throat> I play with a, Yur a Yuriko and a couple other players that play really high CMC spells, so this is just a nice way to get back into the game. <clears throat> Dreadhorde Invasion, one colorless, one black. At the beginning of each upkeep, upkeep, you lose one life, you amass one. Whenever a creature token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until the end of the turn. Um, it's mostly just a creature token that can die every turn and make our commander bigger. Gift of Doom, four colorless, one black. Uh, it's an aura. You enchant a creature. The enchanted creature has death touch and indestructible. The nice thing, though, is this has morph. So you morph it down as a 2-2, two, two, and you can turn it up at any point and attach it to a creature. All you have to do is morph it by sacrificing a creature. So a nice way to give Death Touch and Indestructible just in case of a board wipe. The only downside is I figure that there's probably a good point to add more morph cards to the deck so that they don't expect it. Uh, if, if I don't play it against the same people, then I guess I could catch people off guard, but I'm sure eventually they'll say, hey, you know, it's the only morph card you have in your deck. I bet you it's Gift of Doom. Uh, Hydra's Growth, two colorless, one green. Uh, enchant Creature. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on Enchanted Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of counters on Enchanted Creature. So the whole goal is put this on Grismold, of course. Uh, Moldervine Reclamation, three colors, one black, one green. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life and draw a card. Illness in the ranks, one black, enchantment, creature tokens get negative one, negative one. Demonic Embrace, one colorless, two black, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one, has flying, and is a demon in addition to its types. Um, little side part of it was the demon actually did matter for a little bit because my friend had uh, Rakdos, the one that when it enters, you have to flip things if they're non-demon. So it was kind of nice to have that. But it's also still good, plus three, plus one, flying. And you may cast it from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its cost. So if you really need to get through with somebody and they don't have a flyer, that's a nice way to get it through. Uh, black Market. Three colorless, two black. Whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on it. At the beginning of your post pre-combat main phase, add one black for each counter on it. Very nice. Branching Evolution, one of the cards I traded for. Uh, two colorless, one green. If one or more 1-1 one -one counters will be put on a creature you control, twice that many 1-1 one -one counters are put on a creature instead. Fertile Ground, one colorless, one green. Enchant Land. When it's tapped, add one mana of an additional of any color. Grook's Uprising, two colorless, one green. 
When it enters the battlefield, draw a card if you have a creature with power 4 or greater. Creatures you control have trample. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Um, one of the cards I've considered removing, it's just kind of in there. If I have something else buffed, then it kind of helps out. Um, <clears throat> but that's it for the enchantments. Pretty straightforward. There's a couple I've thought about removing and tweaking and doing stuff to, but like I said, this deck is all just things that I already owned. It's just my fun deck. I just play it just for fun. Move on to the instance now. Uh, invigorating Surge, two colorless, one green. Uh, put a plus one counter on target creature, then double the number of counters on that creature. A nice way to catch people off guard with Grismold and kill them when they don't expect it. Uh, our Astarian's Thirst. As you guys know, I can't pronunciate anything, so... Three colorless, one black, instant, exile target creature, put X 1-1 counters on a commander creature you control where X is the power of the creature exiled this way. So really nice if someone buffs up their creature or in general you need to remove it, you get a good benefit out of it. Deadly Dispute, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw to create a treasure token. Crop Rotation, sack a land, search for a land, put it on the battlefield. Colonies Ambush, two colorless, one green. Uh, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. On the backside, it's also a land that enters tapped if you need that, which could come in handy. Wrap and Vigor, one colorless, one green. Uh, regenerate each creature you control. Nice to help prevent a board wipe. Nature's Claim, one green, destroy target artifact or entrainment. Its, its controller gains four life. Fungal Rebirth. Uh, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two 1-1s, one which is very likely for us. Village Rites, sack a creature, draw two. Dark Ritual, for one black, get three black. Beast Within, two colorless, one green, destroy target permanent. Its controller gets a 3-3 three, three creature token. Evolution Charm, one colorless, one green, choose one. You either search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. You return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or target creature gains flying until the end of turn. So, just a nice versatile card uh, to kind of figure out what we need and kind of help us out get situated. And one of my favorite cards recently, Savage Summonings. <clears throat> I don't see a lot of people play this, and I'm not quite sure why, even at a decently high level, this still seems like a very strong card. But it is one green instant, can't be countered, Next creature you cast may be cast as though it had flash. The spell can't be countered. And the creature enters with a 1-1. One, one. So I guess like the most ideal situation would be kind of like, I have Grismold, I don't have much going on. I kind of save my mana because I have nothing going on. Savage summoning in like a Massacre Worm to really just buff my commander out of nowhere and steal the game. So all the instances, as you can see, pretty straightforward removal, things that help me draw cards, protection, nothing too special out of this. Move on to the sorceries now. Start with invest. One colorless, two black, all creatures get negative two, negative two until the end of turn. Feed the swarm, one colorless, one black, destroy target creature or enchantment, an opponent controls you lose life equal to its converted mana cost. Reanimate. One black, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield. Under your control, you lose life equal to its CMC. Yehini's Expertise. Two colorless, two black, all creatures get negative three, negative three. And you may cast a card with three or less converted mana costs from your hand without paying it. Read the Bones. Two, black, two colorless, one black, scry two, draw two, lose two. Uh, profane Tutor. You suspend it for two... Uh, for one colorless, one black. You get to search library for a card, put it in your hand. Um, having the tutors in here is kind of necessary because you need those negative one, negative one pieces to actually kill the tokens because we don't really want to just kind of give them to people and, and then just kind of wait for them to die because a lot of times people will only really use them as chump blockers. Uh, Night Haze, one black sorcery. Target creature gains swamp walk until the end of turn. Draw a card. Uh, black is a very popular color in general uh, in Magic right now, but in my pod it is extremely powerful and strong and prevalent. Uh, fungal Sprouting, three colorless, one green. Put X11 one, one green sapling creature tokens on the battlefield where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. 
basically if this is just going to double Grismold's power as long as we have Grismold out in a way to kill it. So sorceries, again, pretty straightforward. Most of the jank comes from the commander and the creatures, not really anything else. Um, last but not least, we have the artifact, and I'll run through them pretty fast. Soul Ring, taps for two colorless. Ring of Colonia, two colorless. Equipped a creature gets trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped a creature if it's green and equips for one. Um, another weaker card that I've considered removing. It's just kind of there to help buff something else up and give it trample if I end up being in that situation. Or it also just kind of, if I, I need to, it helps buff up Grismold. But definitely one of the weaker cards that could be removed. Genesis Chamber. Two colorless. Whenever a non-token creature comes into play, if Genesis Chamber is untapped... Spoiler alerts. I don't have any way of tapping it. Uh, that creature's controller puts a 1-1 mirror artifact creature token into play which is what we want so that we can murder it. Wish Claw Talisman, one colorless, one black, enters with three wish counters on it. You pay one, tap it, remove it, give it to someone else. You get a search for a card, put it in your hand. Uh, again, we really need to get some of those enchantments out, so it's nice to be able to do it. Plus, um, if we are in a later situation, we could always just kill the person after that anyway. Talisman of Resilience taps for a colorless or taps for a black and a green if you want to take one damage. Golgari Signet, pay one, you get a black and a green. Arcane Signet, taps for one mana of any color of your commander's color identity. So really, nothing special here. Genesis Chamber is the only thing that kind of does much. After that, it's basically just the lands. I don't have any lands in here, I'm pretty sure, other than maybe one that actually do much. They're just typical, like... I have quite a bit of basics. Got to make sure those are not all stuck together like that. <laughs> um, Bonders Unclive, just to draw a card if we need to. Um, there's a Verdant, because I have one laying around. Rogue's Passage is the only one that probably does anything special out of these. I have a Bajuga Bog, because, yeah, why not in any deck that's black? Rogue's Passage is the only one that matters, because you can help get your commander through unblocked. So, that's it for this deck. Pretty straightforward, like I said. Nothing too crazy, but um, I don't think every deck needs to be. Um, I just, every once in a while, if you guys see a deck or a card in your pile that you think just seems like it would be fun, interesting deck to build around, idea, maybe you just like his creature type, maybe you just like his name because you think it's funny. Um, I call him Big Grizz Daddy. Um, or Grizz Daddy Fresh, whichever. But, yeah. Um, go ahead, look through your binder, find a funny card, dumb card, interesting card, build a janky deck around it, and go and have fun. Just make sure that you're talking about power level and stuff like that before you sit down at a table, because, obviously, if you're playing against, you know, your Croxas, your Infinite Machines, your Kinnons, stuff like that, um... This is not really going to hold up against it. Uh, I'd say mine is probably like a 5, maybe in power level. It's kind of one of those decks, I guess, if nobody does anything, I could pop off and do stuff. There's definitely some room for improvement in the deck, but overall, I think there's it's getting close to its ceiling. I mean, even if you deck this deck out as much as possible, I really don't think it can go above maybe a 6. But it's a fun deck to play, and that's all that really matters. So... I appreciate you guys listening. If you did, um, go ahead, leave a like, a comment. If you think of any cards that would be fun, um, comment any janky deck ideas, any commanders that you've built that you've done kind of a similar situation like I did. I'd love to hear it or maybe even build it too. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.